Hello everybody! Today a video about two essential pieces of hardware to make you ADS-B 2020 compliant. Namely, GTX 345 from Garmin and Flightstream 210 that obviously you cannot see. It is mounted under the glare shield uh, on the co-pilot side. As you know, you have to be ADS-B compliant uh, for all intents and purposes by January 1st, 2020. And there are many routes of doing this. I'm gonna show you my route and kind of give you my rationale and give you a few pointers. Uh, but the reason I did this is because here at Indy Metro, we had a hangar repainting project. You can see these hangars being repainted nice and blue. Um, so we had to vacate the hangars for a band two weeks, three weeks. Just so happened I was going out of the country for that period, so I thought, what the heck, you know, I'm going to pull the trigger and get the plane into avionics shop and get that done. And I'm glad that I did it because uh, I don't have to worry about it now, but also I really enjoy some of the functionality that I've gained and I'm gonna walk you through it. First, let's talk about the transponder. The GTX 345 is a transponder that in addition to the ADS-B compliance, I'm not gonna get into what that really means and the two bands that it uh, works on and all that stuff, but in addition to the ADS-B compliance, it also has FISB weather that comes in, so the government free weather, it comes in. It also has Bluetooth capability, um, so it can give you that weather onto the portable tablet. And it also has um, the uh, ability to have the AHARS, or it has built an AHARS. So you can have a backup attitude indicator, basically. But there's some very important things that I wanted to mention to you because um, it didn't work quite right from the beginning, and I had to learn it the hard way, and I think I figured it out. So hopefully it'll save you some hair pulling. Essentially, when you set up the AHARS, you have to give the GPS I'm sorry, the, uh, the, G the GTX 345 uh, position if it's offset from the long longitudinal axis. Let me explain it to you by showing you this excerpt from the manual. If the GTX 345 is rotated from the, from the longitudinal axis, like it is right here, notice uh, you have to type this in, otherwise it will not be right. In my case, the plane was like in a nose down attitude, in a bank, uh, even though it was in a level flight and the clockwise rotation is a positive your angle you see that now the bonanzas or at least the pre 1984 bonanzas have typically have that avionics panel that's rotated about eight degrees towards the pilot so you have to type this in and let me show you how to do this well first we need to turn this off now I'm gonna hold enter and turn it on at the same time now it's in the setup mode now I scroll with the function key until I see sensors here and then I scroll down until I see internal AHARS orientation. It has to be set up forward, meaning that the connectors on the back are towards the front of the airplane, not the back. The vent is positioned to the, towards the left of the wing and the vent, as you see, it's here. You're looking from the back of the unit, so it will be positioned towards the left wing and now you have to put that very critical your offset of 8 degrees. Once you do this, you turn this off and now it's saved. And now your plane will be hopefully flying uh, or the AHARS will be showing like the airplane is in a level flight um, and it's not gonna show it's like in a bank even though you're flying nice and level. So hopefully that saves you a little bit of a headache because certainly that's not very well documented. Now somebody says, well using Flightstream 210 that also has an AHARS inside why do you bother even configuring this? It's a very good question. And somebody told me, one of the avionics uh, guys on Beach Talk told me, that if you have this particular configuration, meaning you have the 345 and Flightstream 210, and they're wired uh, together, then Flightstream 210 will ignore its internal AHARS and will use the one that is built in here. So, therefore, you have to configure this AHARS, even though you think you might not have been using it. You, you, you thought you might be using the one that's inside of the flight stream. And my flight stream is mounted perfectly uh, 
in line with the airplane and it's nice and level so first I was scratching my head as why is this thing not showing like I'm in level flight and then only after a while I figured this particular tidbit not very intuitive and I wish that was documented more better um, because clearly um, that's not something that it's well my avionic shop I don't think they knew about that they thought you know if I'm connecting to the flight stream 210 the AHARS is the one that's inside of it okay so that's so so as so much about this box it's other than that it's very straightforward transponder you know it's uh, it's a regular uh, behaves like an irregular transponder it, it says in the manual that it should be always on the alt um, you know um, it was, should be always in the alt setting here so when you turn it on it typically will be just like that alt uh, so you don't have to do the standby or any of that stuff like with the old transponders and other than that it's got a few features like it's got some timers it's got some altitude alerts um, and you can set up your backlight and all that stuff but um, other than that, it's a very straightforward transporter, so I don't really need to talk to you more about this. It uses, you have to have a, uh, I think there's a version with a built-in GPS, but I'm using the uh, uh, 530 Waz um, GPS here to drive the GPS position source for the transponder, so that's how it's wired. Um, so, um, and then of course this provides output to some other devices, which I'm going to talk in a little bit. So let's talk about the GNS 530. I prep. I will preface this by saying is I'm not a huge fan of this GPS. Uh, I graduated from GNS 480, which in my opinion was vastly superior to this. Uh, for instance, for once it had Victor Airways, and this doesn't. But with Flightstream 210, that is somewhat mitigated. Many pilots probably were in the same boat as I that had this GPS. It works. It's mine. Actually, is new relatively new, a couple years old, so I don't want to rip it out and just put a glass panel if it works and it does the job. And I fly all over the country with this airplane and I get to find out that I need something more than what this provides from the capability standpoint. Uh, of course, you know, it's nice to have a glass panel or touch the panel, but it's not necessarily going to get you there in a different way or you're not going to reduce your workloads, uh, especially now with this flight stream 210 and then this box. So. That's kind of how I how I look at it. I put my money towards the gas, I guess, and maintenance of the airplane uh, because I felt like it's really not going to gain me a lot more capability. You, as a pilot, probably doing a lot more things on the iPad anyway than, than on the on the box. So that's another reason. Let me walk you through the screens, and I'm going to give you some screenshots from flight because obviously I'm on the ground, so you cannot see this. But you have this the default nav one page. And you know, on which you know, on which you would have the traffic, um, just like on a traffic page. So you would have the diamonds with the altitude and, and track vectors, and you also have a rad, uh, next rad radar here. So if you had some weather, it would actually show here. Um, this is obviously this, the nav two page. This is the traffic. Obviously, it says failed because I'm in a hangar and there's no, it doesn't receive any traffic. This is the weather. So you'd have the FISB weather, and I'm going to show you again some detailed photos of how that actually looks in practice. But even in the default nav one page, it shows you the traffic, it shows you the weather, so it actually gains a lot more in the capability. I also happen to have this uh, Garmin uh, portable, and uh, using the Bluetooth comp uh, capability here, let me just see where, if I can navigate to this. This also displays the weather and the traffic information and everything. And it, it, this is actually getting the stuff from um, Flightstream 210 here, not per this particular GPS, but that's another capability that I've gained. So I've got now ability to see weather and traffic on this particular display. So I kind of set it up like a big radar uh, when I'm flying and that really not do that for anything else than other than just seeing what the weather is kind of around the route of flight. Uh, as this, and this has got a nice big display and it's bright. It's actually a very nice unit, uh, the 796. So, uh, anyway, I, I, I happen to like it and it, it serves this feature uh, purpose a lot more than before, where I just had a map here, but it really didn't give me any more information than my iPad. Okay, now on to the Flightstream 210. So, the, obviously, the main feature, other than the AHARS, is the ability that now you can wirelessly stream flight plans to and from the device and it's and it's really really simple 
So make sure I, I, I show you both both pages and I show you how the synchronization works. So I have a message here and this is giving me all kinds of alerts, you know, that if there's faults and everything. That's fine because I'm in a hangar and it's it's not getting that. It's actually lost the GPS position now. We had it after uh, in a second, but it does it doesn't matter. We're not we're, we're not really interested in that. Let me kind of show you this. So here, I'm using Garmin Pilot, and because I bought two devices from Garmin, I got like six months free of Garmin Pilot, and I, I'm using it now. Uh, I would say it's getting definitely better and it's getting closer to ForeFlight, but still the user interface and some of the functionality is not there, unfortunately. Um, it's a little cheaper, so I like that. <laughs> and uh, it's actually very, it's bright, it seems like. So it's got a good visibility and it's got some really nice features um, with it, like the aircraft profiles, for instance, are a little bit, a little bit better. But, um, there are some other things that are nearly not as well done as they are in the, in the forefront. But anyway, it doesn't matter. For this particular demonstration, we can use the Garmin Pilot. So, here's the flight plan. I'm, I'm doing a flight, I'm actually probably gonna fly there in a, in a few days, from uh, Indianapolis to Ann Arbor. So, in Ann Arbor, to fly to Ann Arbor, you can go to like Weldo Intersection, and then use a Victor Air 11 Airways that takes you over Fort Wayne and everything to Crux and then go to Ann Arbor, okay? So if I look at this, here's Weldo, here's where the Victor 11 starts to go through Marion VOR, as I mentioned, Fort Wayne, straight shot towards Crux, and then here's your Ann Arbor, right? Well, if you wanted to do this with the GNS 530, obviously uh, there's no Victor 11, so you have to put some nav points. Now this airway is pretty straight and it doesn't change its course too much or it, if, if any so it might you might be able to get away with Weldo, Fort Wayne and then Crux and the line is going to follow this airways but if it weren't because it's zigzags or whatever uh, then you would have then you would have a problem well here you can just put the Victor 11 like I did and then send to Now I go into the flight plan and I've got a pending flight plan from Comp to Carb, from Metro to Ann Arbor. I highlight it, hit uh, enter and it says activate. And look, all of the data points are already here. So it's genius, you know, you a uh, few button clicks, literally. So you can do it on the flight with ATC, gives you reroutes and everything. And I gotta tell you, um, Initially, I wasn't going to spend the money for the flight stream to 10 because I thought, man, I'm flying in rural Indiana here. Um, you know, it's direct to everywhere. But, you know, those few times in a year where you go into busy airspaces like New York or out in the West Coast, it pays for itself. And even, you know, if you fly longer distances, sometimes you get reroutes and everything. It just makes it so easy. And I am glad that I spent a little bit of money on this. Okay. So hopefully this was illustrative. I've seen videos on this particular feature before, so it's not like I'm the first guy that's showing you this, of course, but I figured I'll show you this in totality with the 345 and, uh, and everything else that I've got going on. Now, you probably are, if you're astute, you're probably seeing that my Stratus 2S is still on a glare shield. And here's kind of my thought process. I am probably going to migrate to for flight again, so it means I'm gonna be able to use the Stratus. And the only reason I'm thinking about keeping that guy, because keep in mind I do have Ahars here. Let's take, a, let me show you. Of course, you don't have attitude information. It doesn't seem to be working now because we don't have GPS and then we're in a hangar. But you have Ahars in here, and you can do the same kind of a thing like you would do with Stratus 2S. But if my airplane lost total electrical power which is a scenario that is, however unlikely, it can happen because remember my video about that master relay. That thing craps out again and it happens in flight. I'm gonna lose everything. With that meaning, I'm gonna use my GPS, I'm gonna use my a horses I'm gonna have you lose basically everything. The engine's gonna be running, but the cockpit's gonna be cold and dark. 
the only two things that I'm gonna have that may get me safely if I'm in IFR conditions would be my Stratus 2S, which is battery powered. So, you know, this is on continuous charge. You see my plug in there. So that always will be charged and ready to go. And obviously my iPad that is battery powered and it's plugged in, so obviously it will have 100% battery. Now, if that were the case, then I, that this is gonna be my backup, that is truly battery and truly independent of the airplane electrical system. And that's why I'm deciding to keep it for that very reason. And if you are in the same boat as I am, uh, you might wanna just, just do this. I was initially thinking about using some battery powered instrument here and everything, but you know that trick that they teach you at uh, Bonanza uh, proficiency training, where you can overlay your approach plate here, you can have your AHARS in here, and if everything goes down to proverbial crap, you can maybe even shot, shoot an instrument approach with having the AHARS and the approach georeference approach plate in the top display. I'm not saying that is legal. I'm not saying that this is something that um, you know you should do if everything else is working. Of course, this would be an emergency situation only. Uh, so if you didn't have that, and let's just say you just had your attitude indicator here and it's electrical power, what good does that gonna get you? If your instrument in the clouds and you need still a position to be able to, to, to get down to, to earth somehow safely. So just having an electrical power attitude indicator uh, is somewhat limited in my opinion. You need to ideally have a battery powered GPS system, uh, <laughs> like was. And this is probably the closest thing that you can get, right? And I think there have been stories about people that actually uh, did what I was just explaining in real life and they live to tell the story. So it may not be such a, such a bad idea after all. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up here. I think I've discussed everything that needed to be discussed. Um, the flight stream to 10, as I mentioned, is under the glare shield on a little shelf, right about here where the inside is mounted. Um, so that is powered off the airplane power and it talks to the, uh, um, well, it talks to the iPad and it talks to my uh, portable Garmin GPS via Bluetooth. So you saw the configuration here. Flight stream to 10. Okay, you can also go home here and go to connect. And I'll show you that the flight stream to 10 is connected. You can do things like reset pitch and roll and reset the AHARS. I don't think that stuff works very well, to be honest with you, because it doesn't seem to do anything. The Bluetooth configuration and everything. But once it's set up, uh, and once it, uh, the uh, stuff is set up on the uh, uh, the Bluetooth is configured and it's a one-time deal. Uh, whenever you powered it, you don't have to like reconnect to things. It'll automatically reconnect, which is really, really super nice. And to do this, or where the configuration, uh, when the configuration is, it's right here. Bluetooth status and device configurations in the AUX page is where you would set that up and, and pair them and everything. But again, you only need to do this once. Okay, I hope this was informative to you, for you. And uh, if you have any questions, send me your comments uh, down below and I'll do my best to try to answer it. Thank you.